and welcome I'm Ijeoma Onyato tonight. Chadian president visits President Jonathan and President-elect separately, denies knowing the whereabouts of Boko Haram leader Aruba Karishikau. Ecuador's parliament asked South Africa to fish out those behind xenophobic attack. The sad tale of two women rescued from Kuwait. And the European Union pleads with the United Nations to assist in dismantling criminal groups smuggling migrants into Europe. On business news tonight, FBN Capital forecasts negative sentiment in the stock market until May the 29th handle. And in sports news tonight, Nigeria's Taekwondoist gets tough opponents in Tuesday's clash at the WTF World Taekwondo Championship in Russia. Perpetrators of the recent xenophobic attacks in South Africa will be fished out and prosecuted at the International Criminal Court. Well, this is the position of the ECOWAS Parliament. Speaker of the Parliament and Nigeria's Deputy Senate President E.K. Ekweremadu said that the attacks scorn international treaties and charters on human rights, go against the realities of globalization, and are unacceptable. The recent attacks, which members of parliament say are barbaric, shameful, and a total betrayal of collective sacrifice by the people of the continent to end apartheid in South Africa, will form part of discussions at the parliament's ordinary session over the next two weeks. Our correspondent Omelo Gornadi reports. This is the first ordinary session of the third legislature of the ECOWAS parliament for the year 2015. The issues that form the agenda for this meeting are elections, both successful and upcoming across member states, the progressive fight against the Ebola virus in the region, the rising death toll of African immigrants in the Mediterranean Sea, and xenophobia in South Africa. Speaker of the Parliament said xenophobia is an unacceptable crime against humanity, especially against people who played significant roles in the freedom South Africans enjoy today. Xenophobic attacks scorn international treaties and charters on human rights and are certainly out of sync with the realities of globalization. We must all rise up against the new face of apartheid and ensure that those involved are fished out and possibly dragged before the International Criminal Court. I have already issued a statement on your behalf to condemn the development. I have also directed that the matter be included in our agenda for this session. The debate on this issue will be up in the session by members of parliament. While the parliament might not be in a position to sanction the country, strong condemnations will arise from the debates by member countries. It's particularly sad to see xenophobia coming from South Africa. Honestly, unacceptable, it's a disgrace. Because the entire African nation, particularly led single-handedly by Nigeria consistently for years at our own expense to have our own people being killed. We led this struggle against apartheid at great cost. Many generations now may not know that. The younger people now may not know that. Many of us had South Africans in our homes. Other issues that will form the part of the agenda for this ordinary session are urgent and concerted strategies towards ending the plight of Africans perishing at the Mediterranean Sea and peace and credibility in upcoming elections in member states such as Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire and Burkina Faso. Omelogo Nadi Channels Television News. But as the Chadian president there, Idris Deby, arriving the presidential villa into the waiting arms of his host, President Goodluck Jonathan. And after a brief chat behind closed doors, he was asked by reporters to clarify his recent statement that Boko Haram leader Abubakar Shekau was cited around Dipa, a village in Borno State. So where is the Boko Haram leader Abubakar Shekau? Well, it's now anyone's guess, as the president, that's President Deby, has now denied knowledge of Shakao's whereabouts after making statements to the contrary earlier. While calling on Shakao to surrender or face death, 
President Dabi had in March told a news conference in N'Djamena that he knew the whereabouts of the sect leader who, according to him, was cited in Dukwa. President Dabi, however, says a multinational force consisting of Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad and Niger currently fighting the Boko Haram sect in the Lake Chad Basin will soon morph into what he calls a rapid response force. The force, according to him, is being put together by the African Union to fight insurgency on the continent. Well, after leaving the presidential villa, the Chadian leader headed straight to the defense house where he met with Nigeria's president-elect, General Muhammadu Buhari. Speaking to journalists in Abuja shortly after the meeting, General Buhari says his administration will undertake a comprehensive review of the security situation with a view to curtailing all forms of insurgency and terrorism. Our main preoccupation in this region is the course of Boko Haram. And we have known how uh, Chad, Nigeria, and Cameroon have been helping Nigeria to secure the border. And you know what it is. I think it has on commerce and industries. The, uh, some of the bridges were blown. Uh, some of the infrastructure, again, is destroyed. So these are the priorities um, we have discussed. And uh, God willing, when the government uh, gets in place, uh, we will against it and uh, make sure we have a comprehensive review the situation that in here and how it affects our students. In the meantime, the National Emergency Management Agency says it has nearly completed the evacuation of over 6,000 returnees from the Nigeria Republic, but some of them are unable to go home as they are still recuperating in hospital. When Channel's television visited the returnees, they recounted the ordeal in the hands of Boko Haram and the Nigerian military. Our correspondent Gloria Humezoke reports. Wake of the terrible spate of abduction by the terrorist group Boko Haram, hundreds of thousands of families and livelihoods have been wrecked and destroyed. Here at the heart of Yobe State, one of the troubled regions here in the northeast, traumatized families are still struggling with the pains of the terrorist attacks. Almost one week since the National Emergency Management Agency received 6,000 returnees from Niger Republic. <laughs> Since then, the agency began the arduous task of documentation. Clearly, many of them were tired, hungry and sick, including women who gave birth in transit. The resilience by the returnees after the ordeal with the terrorist group naturally draws emotion, but not as much as the state of health of some of the children who have only managed to escape being killed. Some of the younger ones, the women are half, pregnant are delivered on the way, some of them die. And some of the little children die. The ones that cannot be able to go, they die on the way. Even before you even take a transport from Bigimi to Defy, they are talking about 100,000 for one trip. You see? So all these things are going to see is that, is that the Niger have already, the government of Niger, I'm going to say is the president, I don't know. But the president is that they have already dig a hole that they are just expecting it to fall, but God just help us. Because that three months they give to us, they're just expecting that three months, they should level us down completely. But they see that the Boko Haram did not harm us, so they decide to say, okay, let everybody move with their empty handed. Yes, well, Even a cow half is important more than we human beings in Niger because the way they treat us. So far, Nema says it has evacuated over 4,500,000 ,000 people from the transit camps. The area is too hot. We decided to look for nearby bridges where we will be giving them in case of uh, we wanted to use to treat diarrhea and other diseases. Uh, we have collaborated with the, the, the local government Red Cross section to please uh, arrange for uh, emergency silly latrine pits which will be dug soon around these places so that they will not duplicate around. Some of the returnees however say they cannot go home as they are still recuperating in the hospital. Halima Ali, a mother of two who spoke to us, narrated her deal during an encounter with the Boko Haram set. <laughs> 
suna harbi da soja suna jefa wuta to wannan yarinya tana hannun mu bindiga da sun yi mun ce su ba mu ruwa mu sha da sun sake bindiga ka shine mun yarda wannan yarinya a wurin wuta kuma soja din sun doka yarinya din kuma sun ba mu to mun yi gudu mun haye mun je gigimi sun ce kar mu shiga hanya neman moto yana soke mu a jeji wai su sun haifu a hanya suna bari yaro ma wani ma sun suguna haka mata ta suguna kin zo kin daga zaki ga ta mutu baki a bude as some of the returnees remain in the hospital in Gaidam Gobe state the locals around and their vigilante group say they're not unmindful of the strategies of the terrorist group Boko Haram and would face them head on Gloria Umezuke channels television news in part two after the break federal high court in abuja grants request for secret trial of nyanya bomber that's in a moment please stay with us